Hi guys, now we are back with part 3. I realized I had some problem with the contrast between different displays. Not sure I have that figured out, but hopefully it's it'll be better this time I upload. So now I am going back to fixing the lines or because I don't pass anything and now that I'm going back to adjust some of the um, the elements or the lines that I've blocked in earlier and the reality is that we are always adjusting making it trying to make it better so it's depending on everyone's style you may want to path everything but once you path everything again you're pretty much locked to it so and for me I really just block everything in this might take longer because if you don't path it then you're always going back and forth trying to be going back and forth adjusting and, and what I'm doing here now is cleaning up or adjusting the lines on the, on the splitter I think I'm having a bit of trouble looking for my layer right now. So yeah, some people go in and plant out everything. Uh, they start, start with the background color first. If you, that could be an alternative and makes it easier. For me, it's always been doing the line, quick line sketch in paper and then import it into Photoshop and I go with the uh, go by inspiration so I don't plan out color palettes or starting with a background color but maybe I should try that it seems to be more efficient however though in reality the first sketch or the first few sketches never going to be the final sketch. By the time the clay is done, uh, there's well, there's many stages that repeats itself. So the sketching is always happening. And now here I am just going back again to darken the other side. The goal here is to show the volume. There are very many ways that you can use Photoshop and again I'd say when you see different techniques from different people and try those out you come back to make your own formulate your own technique that's what makes your sketch unique and in a lot of this for me it's experimenting and again because I don't have all of the I don't have all of the steps planned out ahead therefore I'm always going back and forth to make sure to adjust to adjust the to adjust the lines to adjust the the tones and the good thing about modern day sketching is that 
you're no longer sketching on paper, marker, and pastel. So in Photoshop, you can always use transform. You can always go back and put another layer, adjust, or or change, correct, refine. And also the fun part of it. So in the old days, you wouldn't have to draw on your own wheels, but today you can just go on the internet and down, you know, copy a, a wheel from somewhere and and use it. It saves time and being more efficient. So my wheel wells are actually not. I haven't really spent the time to make it to make it more realistic. So I'm trying to cheat it with the wheels. <laughs> so what I've done is download a wheel and apply a layer filter to it. And that way it's a little bit more, it's a little bit blurred out. <laughs> and you can see, and it gives you a sense of, it gives you a sense of in motion. A lot of times what will happen is you'll be focused on shading or sketching, working on one sketch. And when it's all done, you realize something is off and you have to go back to adjust. And that's one of the reasons why I don't have. I'll probably use it toward the end when it's a uh, when it's more complete and but understand that if you're working in an OEM then sketching is always happening you're always changing it you're always adjusting it For me, sketching, rendering, this kind of stuff is quite fun because it feels like it's a type of meditation. You go into the zone and you just work on it. One of the reasons is you can always just go over it until you feel it's right or you think it's right. So now I'm going to path for some of more like the character line or to give it more of a clean appearance. It helps to rotate, uh, flip it to the other side and look at it from upside down or you just go, uh, yeah, it helps to rotate to look at it from different angles when you're looking at a screen, uh, your distance that you're sitting from the chair. Sometimes you have a blind spot and figuring out your, what's happening with the actual overall image. So now I'm going to go in and make up a logo just to look more without branding. It's It'll look more strange without branding, so I'm gonna make up a logo and stick it on there. I'm just gonna make a round circle and then put in a crown or something. So in this case, I'm just going to put in some kind of a crown. I find the lasso tool is quite helpful.
So now it looks a bit more realistic and I'm going to put some shading on the bottom to show that the symbol, uh, to show that the emblem underneath has a emboss. Just going through the layers now. So I'm putting a bit of a reflection, or where the tangent radius fill up at the, at the edge of the surface is, like a little touch of a little touch of white to show that there is a section there. Shadows are quite important. Sometimes you, a lot of people sketch without shadows. It saves you time. And it's up to you. <clears throat> I shouldn't actually be reworking the shadow here it's taking extra time I should have it planned out and that way I only have to do it one or two times but now I'm going back I have trimmed out some steps from the video. Perhaps, um, or I have uh, forgotten to record some of the steps, but I guess it's okay. You'll still be able to see. Now I'm just going into uh, I realize my wheelbase is off a little bit, so I'm moving just a little bit. So, like I was saying, the sketch is never going to be final or perfect, so there's always going to be situations where you have to move some things around. So I'm just playing with it now to add a bit more of lighting coming from the rear. So I should probably make the rear appear more translucent, however, everybody have a different style. And so now I'm going back in to uh, add more reflection. And this area here is a bit uh, tricky. I guess I would say that I'm showing a bit of a magic surface. It's not completely resolved. And if sometimes in situations like this, there are no real, like, there are, when you go into clay, if you go into clay, then there's areas that you would be able to think about it while you're resolving it in the stage of clay. So what I'm trying to do is show the front fender to have more of a soft and wraparound feel. I like to have the volume to be fluid soft while contrast contrasting with some hard edge to have a balance. And here's another, another thing that sometimes I use is take the entire layer and 
use the Photoshop, the Curve Adjust. That way I can get more of a contrast out of it. And I just added another uh, reflection, not reflection, but more lighting to the top of the roof. And then I use Motion Blur. So now I'm just hinting that the glass, the door itself has a parting. I draw in the line, copied it, inverted, and move it next to each other. And here I'm trying to add a bit of where the two surfaces meet. There is a bit of light pickup. So I'm doing it over and over and then I use a blur function to soften it and because I moved the wheel a little bit now I have to adjust this lower trim and so now I'm trying to make the line read a bit more dynamic So I'm going to go in and add the mirror. I wasn't going to, but for the fun of it, for somewhat being complete, I'll add the mirror. Here's the base of the mirror. I'm just using, I just picked up a color from the body and fill it in. And I'm using the laser tool to make the bottom of the mirror. And now I'm adding a bit of section where you can see the light pick up then now I'm putting a, a little reflection not a reflection but a shadow of the mirror and I'm just blurring it out and going back to adjust the shape of it to show the body section just a little bit So the actual body part of the mirror is sitting on top of the, the lower L shape. So I'll just quickly mock in some kind of a shape to resemble that there's a mirror there. bit of light pick up on the surface that's facing upwards I noticed I could use a bit of uh, sectioning down there where it parts with the red so here is again I'm going back to emphasize the detail how the light is set in the surface itself always have a flange where it meets with the light whether it is from the top or from from the Y axis and now I'm going in to put in the split line a parting line for the, the bonnet So this is where the door parts with the front fender.
I'm doing it freehand without path because I can erase. But sometimes I use path for the parting, depends on the situation. Then I lighten up the layer just to hint that it, that it is there. So I'm gonna go in and put in the center line. So I'm just gonna rough it in with uh, a red line first and I'm gonna go back in with the path because it's using the, sometimes using the tablet, it's not easy to get the line where you want. So this section, the glass meeting the roof, uh, I guess maybe I should make a video explaining the body sections. A lot of times where the glass meets the roof, it, the surface approach comes from the roof, not from the front windshield. And the body sections in the production car, where the windows are, uh, how it goes down. Those are quite, they're not limitations, but they are, they, they are important aspects to understand. There are sketches that I've seen, a lot of time people want to make it flush where the window is with the, where window is where it meets the door fence, where it meets the door, however the way that cars are made with the windows being able to roll down, it has a track inside the door that is stamped out, it has a flange on top of it, it there is a seat, uh, there is a molding. So those are the sections that will control whether or not your glass can look flush as one surface to the door or not, and usually that cannot be done. On production cars but if you're drawing a concept concept car then you can do anything you want we're almost done with part three and of course the more time you spend the more develop you can develop the sketch better, further and better. So I guess I should start by making a video explaining the car body or how the chassis uh, sections are the, the ones that impacts the exterior. In my next video or one of the videos I will explain some of the basic sections that is related to the exterior and how it impacts the exterior styling. Thank you for watching.